Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's book review is on Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. I'm gonna go with that. So this was uh, an interesting uh, book because I heard a lot of whining. <clears throat> I'm gonna say whining. A lot of whining <laughs> on Goodreads and Twitter. Not really booktube, but on uh, those uh, two other platforms that, one, people were saying that the lesbian relationship was inappropriate for teenage uh, viewers, readers, and two, that, that it was not necessary to write in the sexual violence in this novel because of the teenagers and their weak hearts or whatever but those two things really bothered me here's the first one so why can't you have a relationship with a female character and a another female character because you don't mind when there's edward and bella and jacob and that threesome that weird threesome in twilight especially with Edward, is a bit problematic. You don't mind Nora and Patch from the Hush Hush series, which is also problematic. You don't have a problem with problematic teen relationships if it's male and female, but this is a healthy, as much as it can be because of what's going on in here, healthy relationship. But it's bad. It's sinful because it's two women. <clears throat> okay. Sure. If you don't like it, then don't read it. Don't buy the book and give the author money because even if you are buying the book to like burn it or to tear it to pieces or whatever it is, you're still giving her money. Second controversy. I s talked about uh, this issue in the Strange the Dreamer book read where sexual assault or sexual violence is in a novel and it's pretty obvious that it is but no one talks about it which is odd to me and you see this especially in like historical romance or dark room romance and here the point is that I'll just read the summary and maybe you can deduce with your logic or common sense if you have it where the assault is. Summary. Lei is of the paper caste, the lowest class in Nikara. Even so, rumors of her golden eyes have piqued the king's interest and so she is ripped from her home and taken to the opulent palace, a gilded prison, her life now beholden to the demon king's every whim. But as Lei dreams of escape, she does the unthinkable, she falls in love. Her forbidden romance, enmeshed with an explosive plot that threatens the king's very reign, will first Lei to decide just how far she's willing to go to fight for her freedom. Where in that do you see the hint that this is going to be about sexual violence? It's in the first paragraph of the summary of this book. In a quote, and so she is ripped from her home and taken to the opulent palace, her life now beholden to the demon king's every whim. Every whim. Not just her, the lead uh, character, Lei, but all the other girls of the paper cast that are taken from their homes and are now mistresses for the demon king. What do they have to do because they're mistresses. Just think about it. I'm like, I don't, I don't get where people <laughs> are so confused at this. Like, and I'm very, very proud actually of Natasha for writing so eloquently in this novel about the sexual assault that goes on with mistresses. So this is, do they want to be there? 
most of them don't want to be there. Even if they wanted to be there, you have to go to the king and do whatever he wants at any single moment of any time, of any day or night. Do you want to do that? You have no freedom. And if he wants to do whatever he wants to do, then that's his choice because you're pretty much a slave. I don't see why that is a problem to readers because I want to see the truth. I don't want it to be ignored. I am very happy that a book does not ignore the fact that it is sexual assault for these mistresses that have been taken from the homes and now they have to bend to every whim of this king. Because if you see other places or see movies, TV shows, books, it's mm, the vast majority of the time it's romanticized. Oh, you're the king's mistress. You have everything that you need. No, you don't have everything you need. You ha you don't have your physical uh sexual freedom. Or emotional freedom even because you can't um, really cry unless you're alone somewhere. You can't rant because then you'll probably be killed. You can't do anything even though you're dressed in riches and you bathe every day and you have a roof over your head. Okay, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. This is what's really interesting about this book and I appreciate that it's truthful and that it's discussed instead of glossed over. So again, if you have a problem with the truth, then don't read and buy the book. And you can go on and pretend that everything is hunky-dory, but with your other books and TV shows and movies about mistresses and their lack of autonomy, but okay, that's just me. Cool. You do you, boo. Since I already read the summary, I'm just gonna go into things that I like and dislike. I think the main thing that I did not totally buy was, so there's three casts. The paper cast is fully human. The steel cast is humans endowed with partial demon characteristics. And the moon cast is fully demon. So they look, they're basically humans that are well they're not okay so they're of like a humanoid form but they're animals like like look the best example if you're still not understanding the demon cast is cats the musical <laughs> they look like that but different they're not all cats there's uh crocodiles bulls deer cats dogs birds that are that are humanoid but look like animals, just, they, you know. It's, a, it's interesting, but I don't know if I fully buy that. Like, how did they, how did the demon cast come to exist? I would have liked to know. Maybe it's in the other books. And I know it's because it's fantasy that they can kind of do whatever they want. But I just want some more world building on these cast systems of how the steel and moon uh, came about. Well, especially the moon, because they're, they're said to be demons. They're called demons, uh, as well as the, as the moon cast. And we know how the steel cast happens because a moon mates with the paper cast. And there comes the in-between steel. So... How did the moon cast happen? Was it, was it always like this? Or did like they drink some crazy potion? Did they come from the heavens? I don't know. It's just there already. I would have liked to see that flushed out because I don't know if I was completely buying what I was reading. But what I did like, uh, what I said before, was the assault in this book 
is not romanticized or trivialized. It is discussed heavily. You don't see the assaults happening. It's just before and after, which I find to be appropriate for teenagers or just for anyone because uh, I mean it's extremely difficult to read or watch um, an assault happen of course so the writer did a great job with that and addressing it in the first book and hopefully for the other books as well though Lei is uh, spoiler alert out of the palace at the end of this novel I also am very fascinated about the history of these other uh, mistresses because they come from different uh, places that are within the Demon King's control. This world is, I believe, uh, Chinese inspired. So like they're, um, they're all Asian. And there's also um, a section that is of this Demon King's uh, territory that I think is what we consider India, but it's not India there. So you see a wide uh, range of people and so therefore you see racism, not just racism because of human uh, steel and moon, but also within the class of darker skin of humans so who's better as a paper ca cast is what I you know could tell from this it was paler skin um, and you were from that uh, section of um, what we would call India but I forget what name it was given in this uh, novel they were seen as not I don't know, not, I wouldn't say civilized, but not as good compared to other uh, places that someone might have come from. Like if you came from the city and you're a human, you're better than someone that came from like the lands that are all about farming, but also the racism and the bigotry and the prejudices and discrimination within the paper human class. I also am very interested in like palace life because it's so different from just norm just any normal life even if you're like a rich merchant completely different because they just <laughs> they're so full of themselves and it's fascinating to read people that think that they're great but they're not <laughs> that's basically everyone in the palace and the rules that the king makes because he thinks he's so fantastic but he's not it's always amusing like whenever i uh, read about and study like henry the eighth it's so fascinating and weird to me because he just he's out of his mind and the rules that he creates with every passing year as he gets older just gets like more bizarre also because he went in little cuckoo for coca puffs because he fell off his horse slammed his head on the ground and he was out you know for like two three hours whatever whatever that was and then he just went crazy after that so <laughs> that's the ongoing theory for henry the eighth who knows what happened to the demon king maybe he was just always stupid and weird and full of himself and he didn't hit his head and was in a coma like Henry VIII I don't know but it was mainly focused on the mistresses namely Lei of course because she's the main character so we learned more about Lei and her backstory versus the courtiers and the king himself but I have no doubt he is a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs <laughs> okay all the inbreeding the writing was i mean it was above average i wouldn't say it's great it was an easy read it was an entertaining read so i gave this book four out of five stars and i do recommend it but if you're gonna be whiny about it no i don't recommend it 
Thank you so much for watching my book review on Girls of Paper and Fire. If you like what you just saw, please comment, like, subscribe, and if you want to get to know me, all of that info is in the description box below. Thank you so much and have a great reading day. Bye!